Hello, welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. Can I open up to you viewers? Can I admit something that I'm a little bit ashamed of? We've had over 10 Indie Labs now, I'm a chemistry teacher, and so far we've only had one that involves a chemical reaction. That's almost criminal. That was Indie Labs number four, the 9 volt electrolysis experiment. Well, let's change that right now. Today we're going to give you an awesome chemistry reaction that you can do with at-home supplies that will cost you, literally, some pennies. With this pretty easy technique, we're going to make a chemical called copper 2 acetate. And while we do it, we'll also be able to observe evidence that a chemical reaction is taking place. For materials today, you're going to need some vinegar, some hydrogen peroxide. You're also going to want some type of glass. I'm going to use a measuring cup. It doesn't have to be a measuring cup, but it does make this a little bit easier. You'll need a source of copper, and the easiest one to get a hold of these days is still pennies. And then optional for this, but I do recommend it because it's going to lead to some more fun later on. You'll want a shallow dish that you can evaporate things in, and also a small container. That'll be for storing our final product, the copper 2 acetate. Also for heating, we're going to be using the microwave, so I hope you got one of those. Before we start though, we got to make sure that you know what a chemical reaction is. What is a chemical reaction? Well, one way to define it is that a chemical reaction is any change that takes place that produces a new chemical once it's done. Something that has its own unique set of properties, chemical properties, and physical properties. Its own characteristics. Another way of looking at it, though, is that in every single chemical reaction, atoms are always rearranged. This new rearrangement of atoms, that winds up being our new chemicals. Why do chemical reactions happen? Why do new chemicals have the ability to form? Well, you probably already know that everything, all matter, is made out of atoms. In the case of elements, like copper, the atoms that make it up are all the same. They're all the same type, copper atoms. In the case of compounds, though, things like water, those are made out of molecules. And the molecules themselves are actually just different atoms that are bonded together. Water, for example, is made out of oxygen and hydrogen atoms all in one molecule. When chemical reactions happen, the chemicals that are involved in the reaction, their atoms get rearranged. With the starting chemicals that we call reactants, their bonds are broken. The atoms reconnect in new ways and new bonds are formed. Those new rearrangements, those are our new chemicals that we produce. It's kind of like Mother Nature's way of playing with Legos. So when a change takes place, how do we know if the atoms have been rearranged? How do we know if a new chemical has been formed? Well, there's some key ways to have evidence that a chemical reaction has occurred. Some ways include a color change. If there's a new color present, then we're seeing the new color of a new chemical that's there. If a gas is produced, if it's happening inside of a liquid, you might see bubbles form. Could be that a new solid forms. You see some sort of new solid material that wasn't there previously, kind of like rust on a car. Another case could be that energy is given off, either in the form of heat or light, or in some cases both, like with flames. Those kind of reactions are called exothermic when they release energy. You can also have endothermic reactions where energy is taken in. Those usually get colder, something like your icy packs. You break them and shake them and the chemicals get to mix together. Now all those things I just mentioned, they're not guarantees that a chemical reaction occurred. It's just supporting evidence. And there's plenty of exceptions. Now before we really get into this, one more thing that you need to know about is activation energy. In order for any chemical reaction to happen, there always needs to be enough energy present to get the reactant molecules bonds to break. This energy is something that we call activation energy. If not enough activation energy is there, the reaction won't start. Time for the hypothesis. If we take a solution of vinegar and hydrogen peroxide, and we make sure it has enough activation energy, then if we add copper to it, we will be able to observe evidence of a chemical reaction. And in addition to that, we're also going to make some copper 2 acetate in the process. That'll be one of our chemical products. Got your chemicals? Let's do some chemistry. To begin, start by pouring 2 ounces, or approximately 60 milliliters, of vinegar into your microwave-safe glass container. You need to add to that an equal volume of hydrogen peroxide. And these measurements don't have to be perfect, you can just eyeball them, but you do need to have roughly equal volumes of the two. Next, we're going to heat this up. Microwaves are different, and you might be using a different volume than I, but I needed about a minute 30 to get it hot enough. Once you see it boiling, that's when you know it's hot enough to do the reaction. Take it out, careful it's hot, and then place anywhere from about 5 to 10 pennies in there. And then try to observe any reactions that you're going to get. Do you remember what our evidence was for a chemical reaction? Are we starting to see any already? Taking a closer look, Shortly after you put the pennies in, we are seeing bubbling. So we've noticed some bubbling, but we're not done observing yet. This reaction is going to take place over several minutes, so I've sped up the footage. But are you starting to notice what I'm noticing? 
Are you noticing a bit of a blue tinge? That color is the indicator of the copper plus two ion, which is one of the products in this reaction, and it's part of copper two acetate. It tells us that we've been successful. We have indeed had a chemical reaction, and we've made some copper two acetate. So what do you do with it now? Let's be very clear here. When you dispose of any chemicals, you always need to follow your federal, state, and local laws. But that being said, why dispose of it? There's some optional things you can do here. You want to see your chemical in the solid state, don't you? Pour yours through a coffee filter paper. I tape mine here to another glass. And as the solution drains through, you can see what kind of impurities those pennies had. You might also notice the color change that occurred, further evidence of the chemical reaction. By the way, for those of you who are concerned about us committing a federal offense there, that's only true if you put it back into circulation. Throw your pennies away and the feds won't come knocking. Now take your purified solution and pour it into that shallow dish. This is going to help it evaporate sooner by giving it lots of surface area, lots of exposure to the air. Of all the chemicals involved in this reaction, any products or extra reactants that were left over, they'll all evaporate except for the copper 2 acetate. Over the course of days, you'll start to see some crystals begin to grow in your dish. This is because the solution is losing its moisture and the copper 2 acetate has to recrystallize as a solid. Now let me be honest with you, I did this with about 30 more pennies and kept on adding purified solution to this dish. That way I could get a few more crystals and maybe even some bigger ones. After a couple more days of doing this, my dish fully dried and now I had relatively pure copper 2 acetate crystals. How cool is it to know that all of that blue color is from copper ions, copper atoms that used to be part of your pennies. And now if you want to, you can collect these and put them in that small container. And I recommend doing that. We're going to do some future indie labs with this chemical. Good job, my future chemical engineers. Okay, let's talk about that experiment. Did we see evidence of a chemical reaction happening? Well, for starters, the first thing that we saw was that bubbling. Could be evidence that we were producing a new gas something that wasn't there before the reaction. If we go back to the chemical reaction, what the formulas were showing us, on the product side, we do have O2. That would be the gas that we were forming. Let's also talk about that blue color. Over time, we got to see that blue color start to show up. As soon as the reaction started, we were getting some of that chemical, it's just we didn't have enough of it yet to have seen that it was producing a blue color. When atoms of copper lose two of their electrons, they form copper two ions. The two just means the copper has a plus two charge. And copper two ions have this distinct blue color. That's what we were seeing being produced. Something nice about this reaction is that the products that are involved are oxygen gas, which will bubble out and leave the solution. We produce water, and that too, if given enough time to evaporate, will also leave our container. The only thing that we'll be left with is the copper two acetate. I do urge you to hang on to your copper two acetate. In the coming months, we're going to have a couple more videos come out where copper two acetate is actually going to be one of the starting materials. There's some pretty cool things that you can do with it. Oh yeah, and keep that container someplace where a little kid or a puppy or anyone isn't going to mistake that for candy or something. Don't eat this stuff. Don't. Why? Doesn't even taste good. I, not that I know. Just don't do it. I hope you enjoyed doing this chemical reaction with me. I know I feel a lot better. And if you did enjoy doing the lab, I humbly request, hit the like button and or subscribe to the channel. That way you can catch Indie Labs as they come out. And do you have an idea for an upcoming Indie Labs episode? We've got some options here, but also maybe you've got an idea for something that you'd like to see us delve into. Leave a comment below. Let us know your suggestion. We'll see what we can do. I read them. I take them to heart. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching. And until next time, keep that activation energy flowing. Dream. So what? She used to call you on your cell phone. Ain't no complexity there. Nothing to stimulate my mind. Bone. I want hip hop that takes my mind to the brink. The right beats can make you dance. The right lyrics can make you think. So many in rap, they want to dial it back and feel a fifth grade reading levels right where it's at. Less Schrodinger's cat, a bit more cat in the hat. But lyricists still exist on lesser known tracks. So many putting out the same. Beep.